In the jungles of Haiti, they speak his name in whispers, lest somehow they offend him. For then, tis said, the crops will wither, and the sun will forever cease to shine. In the shadowed back alleys of New Orleans, they speak his name in awe. For it is said he was old when the mountains were young, that he cannot be harmed, that he can never die. Throughout the world they speak his name, in praise, in wonder, in reverence, in fear, but never, never in jest. His name is... One evening, in Port-au-Prince, a plane cut through the thick and humid air, carrying an important doctor who was there on behalf of the United Nations. An escort was quick to bring the doctor off the tarmac, as a local faction was violently opposed to the UN's presence within Haiti's borders. However, their efforts were not enough, and a group of terrorists moved in to attack the well-meaning clinical pathologist. The gang attempted to take the doctor hostage when suddenly, they heard the sounds of a voodoo drum, and were alarmed to see the presence of smoke. After many long months away, the legendary figure known as Brother Voodoo emerged, striking fear in the hearts of the attacking terrorists. The hero was able to make quick work of the assailants by possessing one among them, and using him to take out the rest of the gang, thus saving a very grateful doctor and his escort in the process. The encounter proved memorable to Brother Voodoo, for months ago, at the same airport, this hero arrived in Haiti, not as Brother Voodoo, but as the far more ordinary Jericho Drum. Then Drum was an acclaimed academic, a published author, noted scholar, and well-regarded psychologist. He had come to Haiti to visit the home he grew up in at the behest of his brother Daniel, having left the country and been away for almost 20 years, studying and working abroad. Jericho and his brother grew up in Haiti, suffering under impoverished conditions. In spite of this, the two siblings found a lot of happiness together in their childhood. Though, as proven when Jericho was attacked touring his old home as an adult, he clearly had to learn a thing or two about defending himself growing up in these slums. Though Jericho noted that his home village largely looked the same, at night he could sense a strange new silence in the air, one he felt born of a fear he did not recognize from his childhood. When he came to Daniel living with their aunt, he found his brother deathly ill and claiming to have been afflicted by a curse. Jericho, a man of science, was dismissive of this on two levels. One, he no longer believed in voodoo magic, viewing it as nothing more than a product of local legend. Two, Daniel was the Hungan, the voodoo priest of Haiti for most of his life. So even if all the voodoo beliefs were real, most beings would lack the power to afflict Jericho's brother with a curse. Yet Daniel insisted it was true, and that this was the work of a sinister and powerful Loa given mortal form, Dembala, the serpent god, who had taken over the local village. The great Hungan attempted to stand up to this being after he first appeared months ago, leading to Daniel becoming cursed. While the ailing brother explained all of this, Dembala and his followers arrived, and performed a ritual to finish Daniel Drum off once and for all. As they did this, Daniel used the last moments of his life to beg Jericho to save his people, telling his brother to seek help from a man named Papa Jumbo before suddenly passing away. When a grief-stricken Jericho confronted Dembala over this, he was humiliated and badly beaten by the powerful Loa. Upon recovering, Jericho decided to listen to his brother's final request, and sought out Papa Jumbo, all while carrying his brother's corpse along with him. Drum barely survived what turned out to be a deadly and arduous journey in seeking out the Elder, ultimately being rescued by Jumbo himself and nursed back to health. However, Jumbo had no interest in helping Jericho or protecting the village from Dumbala, as he had grown old and could tell his time on this world was long past over. Instead, he offered to train Drum in becoming Brother Voodoo, one who would be capable of defending the village and beyond. Papa Jumbo trained Jericho in the art of Voodoo, a force of voodoo magic representing good compared to the darkness that is wielded by Dambala and others of evil. Drum proved unusually adept at learning these skills, learning faster and more than any other who had studied under Jumbo before. Jericho learned command over all living things, animal or plant, the ability to speak out to Loa when needed, and an immunity over fire. However, this was all Jumbo could teach, and both felt it may not have been enough to defeat Dambala. 
At Jericho's insistence, he agreed to try one more thing, though it came at great risk, with Jericho possibly losing his soul in the process. Drum, desperate to avenge his brother at any cost, quickly agreed to go through this mysterious ritual. Using his brother's bones, Jericho watched as the sky suddenly darkened around him, and as per Papa Jumbo's instructions, he began to dance. Together, Drum and Jumbo were able to summon the Loa, the spirit of what had once been Daniel Drum, and permanently bonded it to Jericho's body. Jericho survived the experience, but did briefly die at the moment he was bound to his brother's powerful Ungan soul. His body was forever marked by the occasion, with his forehead adorned with a symbol that once belonged to Daniel, and a distinctive streak of white now ran across Jericho's hair. With a worthy successor now born, Papa Jumbo, who had lived long past his time just to ensure this would be, passed away in Jericho's arms. And on that night, Brother Voodoo was born. With his new formidable powers further enhanced by Daniel's possession, Along with an ability for Daniel to leave Jericho's body and possess others at will, Brother Voodoo was finally able to confront Dumbala with confidence. The Loa attempted to summon serpents that would slay Jericho, but he was no match for Brother Voodoo's new powers, who was able to wordlessly turn the snakes on their master, and the serpent god was killed by the beasts. Brother Voodoo was left content with the knowledge that at long last Daniel had been avenged, when he was then approached by a kindly old man named Bamboo, who said he was duty-bound to serve the one who wore Dambala's amulet, a holy relic he held in great esteem. With the serpent god defeated, the blessed amulet was bestowed on Jericho, who Bamboo now wished to serve. Though Jericho was reluctant at first to take on a servant, he quickly agreed to accept the help, noting that Brother Voodoo would have a great deal of work to do in the future. Jericho and Bamboo moved on to New Orleans, where they found a home in the French Quarter, an old manor embedded with mystical power. Though initially viewed in America as a psychologist who turned into a strange voodoo-based fraud, the hero soon became a legend across Haiti, leading to rumors the work with Papo Jumbo had rendered Jericho immortal, while his victory over Dambala and other heroic deeds earned him respect among the people. Thanks to his bonding with Daniel and with some practice, Brother Voodoo's immunity to fire also developed into a mastery over the element itself, and he was able to summon and control it at will. More than one foe found a wall of flame appear before them, and Brother Voodoo emerged through it, charging towards them. Not long after his adventure at the airport, Jericho was contacted by an owner of a factory in Haiti, which found itself attacked by Zuvembis, soulless, undead creatures which were apparently led by Baron Samedi himself, infamous Lord of the Dead. Brother Voodoo went to investigate, only to be overwhelmed by the Zumembis after they ambushed him from beneath the ground, and the creatures proved invulnerable to Daniel Drum's possession. Jericho was sworn just as Baron Samedi rose up before him, and the hero lost consciousness. When he awoke, Drum was shocked to see the Baron in league with a group of operatives from the evil organization known as AIM. The Baron was working with this global organization of criminal scientists to kidnap local Haitians and turn them into Zvembis through a device that drains their minds and spirits, turning them into loyal servants of AIM. They attempted to do the same to Brother Voodoo, but Jericho had a lizard damage the device while pretending it worked on him, tricking Samedi into freeing the superhero. In the ensuing conflict, Brother Voodoo managed to free the Zvembis from AIM control and restore them to normal, all while Samedi's headquarters collapsed around the Baron and the AIM scientists. Returning to New Orleans, Brother Voodoo came upon a woman drowning in the Mississippi River. In a show of just how much his physiology had been enhanced by Voodoo, navigating the heavy currents of the mighty river was no difficulty to Jericho. But when he approached the young woman, she was panicking and in her struggle, Jericho nearly lost his grip on her, causing her to almost drown within moments of being rescued. This is actually something that real drowning people do. I think this moment's neat and uh, Interesting reminder that if you are ever finding yourself rescuing a drowning person, be sure not to let them drown you too. Luckily, Brother Voodoo fought quickly and used his powers over all living things to put the panicking woman to sleep, so that he could safely bring her to shore unharmed. Jericho brought her home to the manor to help her recover where she woke and introduced herself as Laura Lee Tate, daughter of Samuel Tate, chief detective of New Orleans police. She worked as a nurse at Delta General Hospital, 
where she received a suspicious package containing a black rooster. Driving home that night, she was accosted by men in black robes and a gruesome face that emerged from some sinister fog that appeared out of nowhere. The car veered into the river, leading to Brother Voodoo's discovery of Loralee on the verge of death. Suddenly, the same group of men stormed the manor, violently knocking out Bamboo. When Jericho tried to call upon his brother's spirit to assist in the battle, the same sinister fog crept into the manor and knocked Brother Voodoo out cold. When he woke back up, Loralee was gone, so Jericho sought out a blind seer named Mama Limbo to help him find her. Brother Voodoo was told that he would have to go to the castle of the Forsaken, an old home located at a place called Headtaker's Hill. Mama Limbo warned the hero that such an action would be dangerous, but Jericho was determined to find Loralee at any cost. For one as powerful as Brother Voodoo, it was an easy feat infiltrating his home, where Jericho confronted the owner, a man named Desmond Drew. Using his telepathic control over others, Jericho calmed the man down so he was not alarmed at the intruder's presence, and Desmond offered the Voodoo Master a drink. Jericho declined, stating that he abstains from alcohol. Speaking with Desmond, it soon became clear the man was not involved in the kidnapping of Loralee, as Brother Voodoo's power over nature makes it difficult to lie to him. Still, something in Desmond's attitude rang false to Jericho drum. Leaving the hill, Brother Voodoo was suddenly attacked by both the men in black and the mysterious fog. This time, however, Daniel was successfully able to take control of one of the attacking men, knocking the others down for a moment. The fog, interestingly, did nothing as Jericho stood his ground before it, but the men in black robes quickly recovered and knocked the hero unconscious. Brother Voodoo woke tied to an inverted cross beside Loralee, and a man dressed as a black rooster in front of him. The costumed individual introduced himself as Black Talon, a faithful servant of the demon worshipped by this cult. Thinking fast, Jericho summoned Daniel, who possessed one of the cultists, and freed Brother Voodoo. Jericho nearly managed to set the whole ritual room on fire, defeat the cultists, and escape with Loralee, but it was eventually cornered and once again knocked out. When he woke back up, again chained to the same inverted cross in the exact same situation he started out in, this time he found Mama Limbo watching him. She revealed she was behind all of this just so she could use both Jericho and Loralee as offerings to their demonic Dark Lord. Thinking over his experiences so far, Brother Voodoo broke his chains and attacked the cult, all while explaining to them that they've been tricked. Mama Limbo had been deceiving them all with voodoo, controlling the fog herself while hypnotizing the others into seeing and believing what she desired. The old woman confirmed this was indeed the case, as the ritual was not really about any sort of demon, but rather an attempt to restore the woman's youth, by stealing the life essence of Loralee and Jericho. However, before Mama Limbo could complete the ritual, the cross, damaged by Brother Voodoo's second escape, collapsed directly on the seer, killing her immediately. Black Talon, revealing himself as Mama Limbo's son, Desmond Drew, was devastated to see this happen. The rest of the cult, however, was finally free of the illusions and viciously attacked Desmond for his association with Mama Limbo. Jericho could only flee with Loralee and lock the mob inside the ritual chamber while the authorities arrived. Samuel Tate, the young woman's father who initially blamed Brother Voodoo for her disappearance, was the first to arrive on the scene, discovering his daughter alive and unharmed thanks to Brother Voodoo. Now established and comfortable as a new superhero, Brother Voodoo began branching out from his childhood home of Haiti and current residence in New Orleans. While tracking down Aloha, Jericho Drum found himself traveling across the United States in pursuit of the being, eventually arriving in New York City. The Loa, known as Moondog the Malicious, had been running a hedonistic cult in New Orleans before coming into conflict with Brother Voodoo, whose powers quickly overcame the deadly being. Moondog fled, able to keep the chase going for some time due to his ability to have a powerful influence over others, essentially co-opting the minds of innocent beings. Because of all this, Brother Voodoo had an encounter with another superhero known as Spider-Man, and the two quickly agreed to work together to defeat this villainous being. Though the two worked together respectfully, Spider-Man was unnerved by Brother Voodoo's ability to seemingly appear across the city much faster than the younger hero could possibly web-sling from one place to the next. Nevertheless, the two eventually tracked down Moondog, only for the Loa to let out a powerful laugh which magically put the two men to sleep. Voodoo and Spider-Man woke up, tied to stakes, and were nearly burned to death, 
were it not for Jericho's power over fire, while Spider-Man was able to cover himself up with his own webbing. Escaping, Brother Voodoo cornered Moondog by having the spirit of his brother Daniel possess one of the Loa's followers. Intent on finishing off Moondog permanently, Jericho flung the Loa off a building, only for Moondog's body to be encircled by a strange light. Seeing this, Spider-Man rescued the villain from certain death, as killing was against Spider-Man's beliefs and moral code. The two heroes were shocked to find the man Spider-Man rescued was Moondog no more, but revealed himself as Wally Bevins, an accountant from New Orleans, who Jericho realized was possessed by Moondog's spirit all along. Jericho was certain the malevolent Loa would eventually return, but when he did, Brother Voodoo swore he would be waiting for him. Returning home, Jericho Drum was surprised to find Laura Lee Tate visiting not long after, and she wanted to thank the man for his efforts in saving her life earlier from the Black Talon cult. Drum confided in her that many of the legends surrounding him and his origins were indeed true, including the existence of Daniel's spirit within Jericho's body. The man spoke of his story and history, of how Papa Jumbo taught him much in the art of voodoo. While they taunt, Laura Lee's father and chief detective of New Orleans police, Samuel Tate, arrived. Furious to find his daughter there after specifically forbidding her from meeting with the man, in spite of Tate personally witnessing Jericho saving his daughter earlier, a short argument followed between the two men, but Samuel quickly relented as he came to deliver a letter that was dropped off at the police headquarters earlier, delivered straight from Haiti with a request to be sent straight to Brother Voodoo. Jericho was alarmed to find it a simple letter from a friend of his, Sarah Lejeune, casually stating that the woman's husband had mysteriously returned to life. Drum immediately knew this was of concern as Sarah's husband died years ago. Returning to Haiti with his loyal servant Bamboo, the two rushed to find Sarah, who had no illusions about the nature of her husband's sudden return, knowing very well she and her daughter were in danger because of it. Sure enough, the man she had once loved had been turned into a dangerous undead being known as a Zuvembi, who attacked the family. In front of their own daughter, Sarah was murdered by her husband while the child was captured. The Zvembis, and many others, were created by an evil Ungan who called himself Drama Boo, the Death Lord, who planned to sacrifice the child to a Loa of death. However, the Loa wouldn't accept a sacrifice from Drama Boo's hand, instead requiring it to be done by a more powerful vessel. The voodoo priest turned his attention to the only individual the Death Lord was unable to bring back as a Zvembi, Papa Jumbo, whose strength and life up until then resisted Drama Boo's magic. After much effort, the Death Lord managed to resurrect Papa Jumbo just as Brother Voodoo arrived. Furious at the sight of the man who taught him everything about the art of voodoo corrupted into an undead being, Brother Voodoo attacked, but was nearly overwhelmed by Dramabu's horde of undead. By now, however, Brother Voodoo's powers over fire had grown tremendously. With the Zubembis destroyed, Brother Voodoo emerged from the flames, only to find Papa Jumbo and Dramabu fled with Sarah's daughter to a nearby location where they could complete the sacrifice. He found them at the edge of a cliff, prepared to slay the child, but Daniel Drum's spirit emerged, possessed Papa Jumbo's undead corpse, and saved the girl. In response, more of the Zvembis were commanded to attack Brother Voodoo, who once again was overwhelmed by their numbers. Fortunately, Daniel's spirit managed to possess Sarah's husband among the Zvembi horde, briefly restoring his mind. With the assistance of this Zuvembi, Daniel was able to possess Sarah's daughter, and working with Jericho, Dramambu was defeated and hurled off a cliff. With the day saved, Jericho and Bamboo took a moment to reflect on these events, noting that this battle taught Jericho he still had a lot to learn from his dead brother, whose spirit seemed to have quite a will and awareness of its own. At this point, an expert in the mystical and deadly enemies known as Zuvembis, Brother Voodoo next tracked down a group of them who had been summoned in Brazil, where he rescued a man named Frank Drake, a descendant of the famed vampire Dracula. Daniel possessed Frank and with his brother Jericho, the two defeated the Zuvembis. Brother Voodoo then informed Drake that through his powers, he learned that Drake's friend, Danny Summers, was responsible for luring the man into the Zuvembi trap. They tracked the man down and confronted him, only for Danny to reveal he had been forced to do this by Dracula himself. With a new lead, Frank vowed to track down the famous vampire, but before he left, Brother Voodoo delivered a stirring speech, encouraging the young man and, having read his mind, discovered that this person was one of tremendous courage. With that, Jericho bid his new friend farewell, 
and sent him away with a spell designed to reunite Drake with his friends. Returning home himself, Jericho was next visited by a man named Raymond Coker. Coker became involved in mystical events when his aunt and uncle passed away. Settling their affairs in Haiti, Raymond met a witch woman named Gisela who gave him a disturbing vision and told the man to visit Brother Voodoo for help. Raymond took Jericho to meet with his friends who were already investigating a prophecy which Gisela was warning Coker of through the vision. As the group discussed this matter, Jericho quietly used his powers to deduce that one among them, Jack Russell, was in fact a werewolf. The group was then forced to fight off a group of attacking Zuvembis, but thanks to Jericho's expertise, he deduced these were not the true examples of the zombie-like beings he had fought before, but rather artificial, magically created constructs resembling them. The attack did lead to the capture of Raymond, and Russell nearly turned into his werewolf self, but Daniel Drum's spirit was able to enter Russell and calm the man down, returning him to his normal human form. What remained of the group then journeyed to Haiti, battling through more artificial Zuvembis before coming upon the place of their creation. A sinister and mystically empowered place within the island known as the Devil's Grotto. In this strange place they found Raymond Coker and transformed into a werewolf, and the villain behind all of this, Dr. Glitterlight, an enemy of Jack Russell and his friends. Drum sent Daniel's spirit into Glitter Knight's body, but the villain was able to use his command over magical forces to corrupt Daniel's soul, and launched it back at Jericho. Though this stunned the master of voodoo, Jericho, Russell, and the rest managed to survive the fray for the most part, though Glitter Knight managed to free with Jack's friends, Coker and Topaz, into the Devil's Grotto itself. Jack and Jericho followed them in a journey that took them through a realm of space and energies where the master of voodoo and the werewolf encountered the three who were all, beings who tried to warn of the threat Glitter Knight represented, as they themselves battled this being long ago. They told the two men that the key to defeating the villain lied in Jack Russell himself before they continued on, journeying through mystical space towards Jack's captured friends. After a great struggle where Jack's friend Topaz was even possessed by a demon, Drum and Russell managed to free Jack's friends and finally defeat Dr. Glitter Knight, saving the day. One day, Ben Grimm, also known as The Thing, a superhero and core member of the Fantastic Four, sought out the Black Panther, as the two superheroes were investigating a series of disappearances in New York City among the Black community. However, on that day, Ben was surprised to find Black Panther's apartment was unlocked, and the hero was nowhere to be found. Inside, The Thing encountered Brother Voodoo, who used his powers to disappear and reappear in front of Ben as a demonstration of his abilities. Jericho Drum did this in the hopes he could show he had come in peace, and that such abilities would merit a famed superhero hearing out someone more obscure like Jericho Drum. Though it left Ben Grimm suspicious of the stranger, the tactic worked in getting him to listen, as Brother Voodoo told the man he had come here from New York to also investigate the disappearances. Voodoo sought out Black Panther, but found him gone, with obvious signs in the home of a struggle along with a note. The thing recognized that note was a list of the more prominent people in the city according to the local paper, the Daily Bugle. This was enough to get Ben to consider contacting his friend Reed Richards, but he chose not to as, at the time, the Fantastic Four were disbanded. Instead, Brother Voodoo offered his assistance. They tracked down a woman named Mrs. Marley, another name on the list of prominent black individuals, but found she had already been taken, and two FBI agents were already on the scene investigating these disappearances as well. From the federal agents, the heroes learned that Mrs. Marley owned a private airstrip, at which point, in a display of his growing mastery over voodoo magics, Jericho Drum immediately teleported the two right there, realizing the matter was of great urgency, and much to the alarm of Ben Grimm. The heroes appeared at the airstrip just as those kidnapped were being loaded into one of Miss Marley's private planes, and they both witnessed among the kidnappers a powerful monster who Jericho could sense was emitting strong supernatural energies. Ben recognized the monster as one he and T'Challa encountered earlier, but swore he personally watched the creature die. The heroes didn't have enough time to stop the plane, and the thing lost his temper, attempting to knock the aircraft down with a mass of crushed metal fences he crudely assembled into a ball. Jericho was forced to calm Ben Grimm down, reminding the man of the innocent captured people on the plane. Ben, realizing he wasn't thinking, quickly relented with the plan leading to the plane safely escaping and arriving at its destination in the country of Uganda. 
There, the man who orchestrated this mass kidnapping, a villain known as Dr. Ubadu, reunited with a powerful mystic he had partnered with in this plan named Usili. As together, the two had enslaved a vampire and transformed it into a Zuvembi in order to follow through with this plan. Using his superhero connections, Ben was able to procure a plane and flew them to the African country. With Voodoo able to sense their location, but at that point unable to teleport the two that far across the world. As they arrived, the plane was hit by a surface air missile, which knocked Jericho out. With him unable to teleport the two out of the plane, Ben Grimm was barely able to get the two to the ground safely. The thing sent down his injured colleague and went to free those captured on his own. He found Dr. Ubadu holding T'Challa hostage, only for Brother Voodoo to arrive, instructing Ben to smash a mystical urn that was keeping Black Panther passive. Ben Grimm was dismissive of this idea, not wanting to listen, and with little time left before Ubadu would have killed Black Panther, Brother Voodoo was forced to use Daniel's spirit to possess the thing himself, and shatter the urn in a single blow. With Black Panther's mind now restored, he easily freed himself from Ubadu's clutches, while the vampire also escaped from Musili's control. It struck out at the mystic who enslaved him, but the vampire escaped when the thing intervened and chased the undead being away. While fleeing, it turned into a bat and in a final act of revenge, killed Dr. Obatu. With those captured saved, the three heroes brought everyone onto Miss Marley's plane and they all returned home. Brother Voodoo continued to operate, still largely focused on working in New Orleans and Haiti. In spite of some recent adventures abroad, he remained largely known only in those two communities at this time. For some time, his specific actions are largely unknown and out of the public eye, until Jericho returned to his enchanted mansion only to find his home in flames. In spite of his ability to navigate the fires, the blaze burned out of control, destroying the mansion and, unfortunately, killing Jericho's loyal servant, Bamboo. It seems Dumbala, who once wielded a powerful serpent Loa, and the first villain, Drum Defeated, had returned and his followers struck out by destroying Brother Voodoo's manor. Jericho tracked down Dumbala to New York City and sought the help of the legendary master of magic, the Sorcerer Supreme known as Doctor Strange. Strange, knowing of magics from all across the earth, was already familiar with Brother Voodoo by reputation and recognized him as a friendly mystic. So he heard out Brother Voodoo's story and agreed to help. However, Stephen Strange also recognized that Brother Voodoo was lying to them that Daniel Drum had already become possessed by Dambala's Serpent Loa. In an impressive display of the spirit's power, it was able to escape the Sorcerer Supreme with Daniel's Loa. Now free from the Serpent's control, Jericho admitted he tried to harness Dambala's power for himself, and in the process, became possessed, and was the one who burned down his own home and killed Bamboo. At this, Doctor Strange vowed to resolve the situation himself. With Jericho now vulnerable to Dambala's possession, Strange insisted on doing so alone, leaving Drum in the care of his companion, Clea. Stephen pursued Dumbala throughout the city, but eventually the Loa doubled back and tried to possess Jericho, as Doctor Strange suspected would be the case. Clea erected a magical barrier and held Dumbala back until Stephen returned, and managed to trap Dumbala's Loa. However, it still possessed Daniel's own spirit. With a powerful but risky spell, Doctor Strange managed to banish the spirit of the Loa while safely restoring the bond between Daniel and Jericho. With the brothers reunited in Jericho's body, Brother Voodoo thanked Doctor Strange for his help, humbled by the experience while calling Stephen a true master of the mystic arts in comparison. Jericho returned home, vowing to root out and defeat the rest of Dumbala's followers. When he disappeared before Strange and Clea, Stephen commented that Brother Voodoo's powers and abilities must not entirely be rooted in traditional magic, as he was able to navigate the magical barriers of Doctor Strange's home without difficulty. Following this, sometime later, two beings agreed to play a game with one another. The first among them was the Grand Master, a member of a powerful collective of aliens known as the Elders of the Universe. The second was an individual whose identity was concealed but eventually revealed to be the embodiment of death itself. They gathered all the heroes of Earth together in a contest of champions, with Brother Voodoo among those taken to participate in this challenge, all occurring in a massive stadium floating in space, while the entire planet Earth is held hostage, ensuring the superheroes would cooperate. Jericho was not chosen to be on any of the subsequent teams selected for this tournament, but did witness his resolution before he was returned to Earth, which was left safe thanks to the action of various heroes from around the world. 
some of which who emerged for the first time around these events. Not long after this, Brother Voodoo began to investigate an attempted coup of Haiti in the making, planned by a group of terrorists operating in the port city of Mirabales. There, Jericho was separated from his brother's spirit. Daniel's Loa found itself battling some of these terrorists at the side of a then relatively new superhero named Moon Knight, who had been brought in by Haitian authorities, specifically its country's head of security, a man named Picard. Not recognizing this mysterious superhero as an ally, Daniel possessed one of the criminals and attacked the Moon Knight, also known as Mark Spector. However, the Spectre was able to knock the goon Daniel was possessing unconscious, and the other terrorists managed to escape with both Daniel and the possessed criminal, in spite of Spectre's best efforts. Jericho drama arrived shortly after, with the two superheroes explaining who they were to each other, as well as what they knew of the situation. Mark, a wealthy hero with many resources, then called in a custom-built helicopter flown by his employee named Frenchie to help turn in some of the terrorists to Haitian authorities, those knocked out by Moon Knight and Daniel who didn't manage to escape. As Frenchie did this, Jericho used Daniel's spirit to track down those attempting the coup. With Voodoo leading the way, he and Spectre traveled by boat to find Daniel and the rest of the terrorists out. Their journey was perilous, with the two encountering Zubembis riding undead alligators. But they handled the battle well by working together, forcing the Zubembis to retreat. Frenchie completed his cleanup duties in Mirabale and regrouped with the superheroes, giving Spectre a ride in the helicopter while Voodoo remained behind. They agreed to split up, with Spectre tracking down Daniel, while Jericho followed the Zubembis. The pass ultimately led to the same lagoon, where Moon Knight found Jericho about to fall off a waterfall. Though Spectre tried to save the man, Jericho insisted on diving off the falls just the same. Separated again, Moon Knight landed safely on the ground on his own in the lagoon, only to be surrounded by armed insurrectionists. But they fled when Brother Voodoo appeared behind them and retrieved Daniel's spirit. Tracking down the criminals, they learned this coup was actually planned by Haiti's own head of security, as Gicard had grand delusions about himself and called himself the Grand Bois. Moon Knight was captured by the man while Brother Voodoo watched on and allowed him to be taken to the Grand Bois' lair. As this villain planned a ritual to cement his control over the Zvembis he summoned, at that point Jericho appeared, having been waiting up until this point in an effort to learn more about the Grand Bois and the source of his power, which came from the giant skull-shaped artifact. On Mark Spector's command, Frenchy used the helicopter's weapons to destroy the skull from outside, rendering the Zubambis inert and causing Gikard's men to immediately turn on their leader. Brother Voodoo deduced that Gikard's men were also under his coercion, as they were the descendants of the Zubambis Gikard had created, and felt compelled to work for the man after he threatened to make more Zubambis if they didn't. With Gikard arrested, Moon Knight offered to split the money that was paid to him for the job, but Brother Voodoo refused pointing out that the money was stolen by Gikard from the country of Haiti. Hearing this, Moon Knight insisted on giving all the money to Brother Voodoo anyways, suggesting he use it to turn the Grand Bras lair into a hospital in order to aid the country. For many years after his first encounter with Moon Knight, Brother Voodoo once again disappeared from the public eye largely unknown outside of the country of Haiti and the city of New Orleans. When he next emerged several years later, an evil, death-worshipping cult known as the Culto de Merte, led by a villainous Hungan named Dr. Friday, managed to capture Brother Voodoo, take his amulet, and forcibly transform the powerful superhero into a zombie-like being called the Zambi that retained his intelligence using a magical potion. Fortunately, Daniel's spirit prevented them from fully taking control over the master of voodoo, allowing Jericho to escape from captivity just as the group arrived in New York City weeks later. Disoriented and desperate, Drum sought out the aid of Mark Spector, also known as the Moon Knight. As the two men now knew and respected one another, Mark was quick to take Jericho in, offering various amenities to help Brother Voodoo recover and fight the Zambi potion, though without the amulet, the man wasn't able to make full use of his powers. When Jericho sensed another Zambi nearby, the two superheroes tracked it down to a nearby restaurant full of various mobsters. This led to a chaotic scene between the gangsters, all well armed. The Zambi, revealed to have a bomb strapped to him, 
and the heroes, unexpectedly joined by a third then new hero named Midnight, who kicked the Zambi out of a window, saving everyone when the bombs attached to his chest exploded. Begrudgingly, as he disliked the hero, Mark Spector explained to Midnight the situation at hand. Spectre and Brother Voodoo agreed they needed all the help they could get, and they regrouped at Mark's home. There, Jericho trashed the place in an effort to clear his darkening mind and focus on the cult's location, which Drum was successfully able to determine was within the South Bronx. The cult, meanwhile, was revealed to be targeting the crime world of New York City in an effort to take it over for their own nefarious purposes, partnering with the gang leader in the city on the condition that they eliminated all of his rivals. A prolonged battle began between the heroes and Dr. Friday's zombies, along with the man's human criminal allies. Due to his lack of powers, Jericho wielded a shotgun during this time. Because of this attack, Dr. Friday was killed by his own ally. The powerful New York gang leader was unimpressed with the man's mystic abilities as it drew down this heat. As Friday passed away, his hold over the Zambies weakened, while Jericho's power strengthened as he got closer to the medallion, to the point that Jericho was able to call out to Daniel's spirit, and together, the two brothers managed to break the spell and free the Zambies, Jericho included, returning both Drum and the others transformed by Friday back into their normal human forms. Jericho retrieved his medallion and was satisfied with his outcome, though unknown to him or Moon Knight, Dr. Friday was able to compel one final Zambi into taking revenge against the man who killed the villain. Returning to Port-au-Prince not long after, a voice called out to Jericho, luring him down an alleyway. In front of the Master of Voodoo appeared the Master of Mysticism, Dr. Strange, along with a number of his allies, including a young woman named Morgana Blessing, a large green minotaur-like creature named Rintra, then serving as Strange's apprentice, and most significantly, Morbius, the living vampire. Jericho was quite eager to help Stephen, wanting to repay the Sorcerer Supreme for saving his life against Dimbala's spirit. The gathered group was tracking down a dangerous woman named Marie Laveau, and with the help of Morgana, Brother Voodoo was able to quickly teleport the group to the being's location, Christoph Citadel, built by an ex-slave in the dreams of establishing a Napoleonic-style Haitian Republic. There, they encountered Laveau, a mystic using vampires for her own nefarious purposes who recognized Jericho from his appearances in various supermarket tabloid magazines. She summoned various vampires, including Doctor Strange's brother, Victor, who at that point had taken on the moniker of an infamous vampire called Brother Blood. While the others battled the vampires, Jericho reached out to Daniel, who was able to contact the spirits of an army of ex-slaves who were preparing to battle Napoleon centuries ago. Denied the opportunity then, Drum resurrected the army as zombies, so they could have a chance to finally battle and defend Kristoff's Citadel. The zombies, being undead beings, were beyond Jericho's control, and they quickly tore the vampires apart. Knowing the Horde was about to turn on them, and eventually rampage across the rest of Haiti, Doctor Strange was able to destroy the zombies and even rescue his brother, grateful for Jericho's help, while Laveau escaped. Pursuing her, Jericho, Strange, and Morbius all traveled to New Orleans, to Laveau's home, so that they might learn more. There, the trio was attacked by a gruesome monster, which was immune to Jericho's voodoo magics, and as such, struck out at the man. Luckily, Doctor Strange was able to banish the creature, when suddenly, an image of Marie herself appeared, taunting the men. Meanwhile, Morgana, Rintra, and Victor all met with Bamboo, revealed to have been still alive, his death an apparent fabrication by Dambala's spirit almost a decade ago. Bamboo took the group to Brother Voodoo's home, also intact and unharmed, showing that everything Jericho said while possessed by Dabala's spirit was a lie. There, Marie Laveau appeared, attacked the gathered group, and injured both Rintra and Bamboo. Shortly afterwards, Brother Voodoo and the others arrived, only for Marie to reveal her presence and that she had taken Morgana hostage. The evil sorceress demanded a page of a spellbook in order to create a new, unstoppable vampire plague. But Doctor Strange felt he had no choice but to comply to their demands in order to save Morgana. Though both Morbius and Brother Voodoo tried to stop the man, Stephen easily blasted the two away, only for him to come to his senses himself, realizing he couldn't risk unleashing such a plague onto the world. And so, as Marie moved to kill Morgana, Bamboo sacrificed himself to save the young woman. With this, Strange was able to attack, leading to a prolonged battle between him, Marie, 
and one of her vampires, a being named Varney, summoned using Bamboo's soul. Strange emerged victorious while Jericho was able to bring Marie under control and safely within their custody, though this time Drum was forced to deal with the true death of his loyal companion, Bamboo. Leaving Strange to deal with these vampires on his own terms, Jericho took some time to grieve his fallen comrade. With his old companion, Laura Lee Tate, who turned out to be white for some reason, the two started living in Haiti together as Jericho kept the citizens of the fleeting country safe. By this point, he was practically treated as a god among the people of this land, even at one point rescuing a boat during a vicious storm by turning into a giant. However, Jericho was growing troubled following Bamboo's death. Increasingly, he began to resent and grow frustrated with Loralee, as she put her potential career in medicine on hold to stay with him, and he began to feel she could do much more good elsewhere away from him, putting distance in the relationship between the two. Meanwhile, even the animals of the land began to resist Jericho's commands. It seems that the Loa, who often empowered Jericho, felt that the man over the years had abused his powers, especially in more recent days, with moves such as seeking the powers of Dambala's amulet. And as such, his mastery over these powers began to weaken. In his growing anger, one day Jericho lashed out verbally against Laura Lee, and she decided it was time for her to go back to America, though she still affirmed her love for Drum. In response, Jericho called upon Daniel's spirit and possessed Laura Lee in an effort to force her into loving him. Daniel's spirit took over the woman's body, and for a fleeting moment, she looked upon him with love as she once did. But that was not her choice, and when Daniel's spirit returned to Jericho's body, Laura Lee was left aware of the possession, irreparably destroying their relationship for good, and leaving Jericho guilt-ridden and devastated. As Laura Lee left, a young child approached the superhero, begging for help with his sick mother. Jericho realized he would have to continue on his brother Voodoo in order to seek redemption for himself. One day in New York City, Matt Murdock was trapped by a powerful witch named Calypso, who imprisoned the superhero soul within a jar and bound the man into her service. Under her control and transformed into a pale, partially zombified version of himself, Murdoch tried to take his mind off of things by watching TV. He saw Brother Voodoo appear on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Unusually cheerful, Jericho played to the audience in an effort to sell his book, Do You Voodoo? I Do. He then went on to explain some basic Voodoo beliefs, including that a soul has two halves. The Gros Bonange represents a person's will, symbolized by their shadow. The Tobonange is their conscience, symbolized by the penumbra. This matched Murdoch's experiences as he had lost his willpower to resist Calypso, but maintained his sense of conscience. On TV, Jericho Drum then went over two different types of zombie. The first is the simulated type. The first is a simulated type of undead created through chemical substances. Jericho himself once nearly fell victim to it, and it currently had a hold on Matt Murdock. But luckily, victims of this form of zombification can be restored to human form. Then there is the more traditional, pure, and dangerous form of the Walking Dead, including a famous version of that form known as Simon Garth. Suddenly, Jericho's spirit leapt out of the television screen Matt was watching, warning Murdoch that Calypso was trying to create one of the Walking Dead and begged Daredevil to stop her. Though Murdoch struggled with the control Calypso exacted over him, he eventually broke free enough to confront her. The witch ultimately perished in the struggle that followed, when the zombies she was creating broke free and turned on her, while Murdoch barely escaped the encounter with his life, as the witch's headquarters collapsed around him. With that, Daredevil returned to human form, but remained convinced that Calypso very likely could have survived the encounter. By this time, Drum had been spending some time away from Haiti and his identity as Brother Voodoo, he soon became plagued with nightmarish visions of people being murdered by Voodoo magic. Speaking out to him for the first time, Daniel Drum's spirit warned his brother that the two of them would continue to experience visions of these deaths until they put an end to them. So though Jericho agreed to look into this matter, he still refused to take out the name Brother Voodoo. Jericho sought out a man named Jenny Ketch, who was also looking into these deaths. 
Drum explained to Ketch that Daniel Drum's spirit had come into contact with a lost soul, somehow involved in all of this. Though Jericho remained rueful that he seemed unable to escape the life of wielding magics against the forces of evil. Hearing this, Danny decided to seek out another ally, one already familiar with Jericho Drum, the living vampire Morbius. The trio encountered a shaman who had taken control of a powerful zombie that was so strong it was able to wield the mystically empowered chains of Ghost Rider against him. Jericho called upon Daniel's spirit and asked him to possess the shaman. This worked, and at once, the zombie collapsed. Daniel, having now read the shaman's mind, relayed his history, revealing the man's name was Ellery Snow. Ellery once worked with a private detective named Nathaniel Mayer back in the 1950s. Mayer was captured by a villain named Cole Rennie, also known as Professor Viper, after the detective was betrayed by a few then high-ranking members of New York society. They killed Nathan and blamed the murder on Ellery, who was imprisoned for years. Now, 40 years later, Ellery was freed and began a crusade of revenge against those that betrayed him and Nathan, resurrecting Mare's body and forcing it to help him out with his plan. Luckily, Ghost Rider Morbius and Jericho were able to stop Nathaniel Zombie from killing a woman, who, though she was around at the time of Nathaniel's death, was completely innocent in what happened to Mare and Snow. Though the trio confronted Nathan, he revealed his control had returned over himself after Ellery was possessed, and he just wanted to speak to this woman one last time before he died. Though the group was well aware this didn't make anything right, they took some comfort in the thought that the departed spirits had been put to rest. Now firmly no longer interested in being Brother Voodoo, Jericho began focusing on destroying the undead on his own terms, much to the disapproval of Daniel's spirit. <laughs> he wound up teaming up with Lilith the Vampire, the sole known daughter of Dracula. Tracking down a number of bodies stolen from a cemetery, they came upon an auto junkyard, where they were attacked by a swarm of magically controlled birds. These birds were controlled by a villain called the Scarecrow, a villain given strange augmented powers that feed off the fears of others. He faced and was defeated by Ghost Rider, but his spirit survived and went on to possess the body of Danny's deceased sister, Barbara Ketch. Jericho was rendered unconscious by the attack, only to be woken later by Daniel's spirit. The blood from the animal attacks nearly overwhelmed Lilith's vampire nature, and she was compelled to briefly attack Drum before he managed to calm her down, having learned how to quell her need for Bud safely in the time they had been working together. On doing so, Lilith took off on her own. While chasing the vampire, Drum ran into Danny Ketch, who had by then become possessed by Scarecrow himself. Jericho managed to subdue the Scarecrow and tried to interrogate him, but the spirit possessing Ketch used visions of Lilith turning on Jericho to take mystic control over the man, nearly giving the villain the opportunity to slay Drum outright. Fortunately, Jericho was saved thanks to Daniel's spirit intervening, giving Jericho a chance to break free of the Scarecrow and temporarily incapacitate the villain. Drum then rushed off to stop Lilith from hurting anyone, saving Danny Ketch's family in the process. This allowed for the Scarecrow to catch up, knock out Drum, and once again almost use Danny's body to kill Jericho Drum, only for the Ghost Rider spirit to emerge in Barbara's body. Seizing this opportunity, Daniel Drum possessed his brother, grabbed Danny Ketch's possessed body, and allowed for the Scarecrow spirit to finally be sent to hell by the Ghost Rider. In the end, Danny was successfully restored as the Ghost Rider, and the Scarecrow was finally defeated. But it came at great cost, deeply traumatizing Danny's mother, nearly killing Ketch's brother, and being a generally unpleasant and painful experience for Danny himself. Jericho could do little more than move on. He was next contacted through fax by a superhero named She-Hulk and a woman named Miss Arbogast on behalf of a team they were part of at the time called Heroes for Hire. Drum, now once again embracing the identity of Brother Voodoo, was treated with skepticism by a number of the heroes, including a woman named Misty Knight and a man named Luke Cage, though he was greeted warmly by Arbogast, who knew Drum and even had a cup of tea prepared for his sudden arrival by mystic teleportation. Jericho was called in to treat a badly injured Danny Rand, a man who had taken on the identity of a powerful superhero known as the Iron Fist. It was easy for Brother Voodoo to diagnose Danny as having consumed his own life force, 
Rand needed a transfusion of spiritual energy, and even though they were skeptical of all this, Cage and Knight readily offered to help, along with fellow hero for hire, Colleen Wing. Together, they began a ceremony to complete the transfusion, joined by a fourth member of the Heroes for Hire, codenamed White Tiger. The ritual was particularly delicate. One wrong move on Jericho's part, and either Danny or the Heroes for Hire spirit donors could have been killed. Nevertheless, Jericho succeeded and managed to save the life of Danny Rand without incident. With the Iron Fist restored, Drum was then invited to enjoy a discreet moment of pleasure with Miss Arbogast, away from the others. Not long after this, the acclaimed vampire hunter known as Blade arrived in New Orleans. He came here on news that one of the worst undead beings the vampire hunter had ever faced, a sinister, demonic being known as Deacon Frost, had taken over a crime family in the city, and the vampires were now eyeing every other major settlement across America with the intention to do the same. Blade found it difficult rooting out the undead in this city, with him doing little more than making himself a target as no civilian wanted to talk to him about what was going on in New Orleans. Eventually, Blade was able to track down Jericho Drum for help, but only after some vampires began to follow the man. Though Drum had returned to the identity of Brother Voodoo and abandoned his partnership with Lilith the Vampire, he was still quite bitter over the idea of being a superhero and Bamboo's death, and thus was not happy to see Blade. Jericho was aware of Deacon's presence in the city, but pointed out that Frost had taken over a single crime family and begun a relatively small gang war. To Brother Voodoo, there were much bigger threats out there at the time menacing New Orleans. One of Jericho's old enemies, Marie Laveau, had returned, and Jericho, having already lost Bamboo to the evil woman, and knowing full well what sort of vampiric horrors the woman was capable of unleashing, was fully focused on taking out the powerful sorceress. So Drum refused to help Blade whatsoever. The vampire hunter tersely reprimanded this decision, calling Jericho selfish and questioning his reputation as a superhero. He laughed, but did come to immediately regret these words, acknowledging that Brother Voodoo had, at this time, taken up mystic protection of the entire city on his own. It would be stressful for anyone but the added threat of Marie Laveau, who Blade was well aware was a powerful immortal, known as the Voodoo Queen of New Orleans, would be a serious problem even for the likes of Doctor Strange. Blade was also aware of Daniel's spirit living within Jericho's body, having apparently witnessed Brother Voodoo's powers firsthand in the past during undisclosed events, and was empathetic towards the man for having to live with something like that. Blade was then ambushed by vampires, who nearly got the jump on him, and associate of his, Hannibal King, appeared. Hannibal, a vampire detective actively fighting against his vampiric nature and the undead world, was eager to assist in taking out Deacon Frost. Meanwhile, Marie Laveau, calling upon Loa, including Baron Samedi and Dimbala, two Loa Jericho had faced in the past, began a spell to create new Zumembis under her command. She was confronted by Jericho but was ready for drum and called upon her new allies, Deacon Frost vampires. Jericho woke up on a ship beside Blade and Hannibal, who had been captured by Frost. Deacon and Marie revealed they had made a deadly alliance, and had firm plans to spread vampirism across the entire world of America. An item called the Grizzly's Pouch was placed around Jericho's neck, disorienting the voodoo master and preventing Daniel from leaving his brother's body. With him unable to help the heroes out and Hannibal weakened by garlic, Blade was forced to engineer their escape. Now free, Jericho attacked Marie's Zubembis with a savage fury, hell-bent on taking revenge against Marie on behalf of Bamboo. Drum took on Marie alone, while the vampire hunters went after Deacon. During the battle, Jericho called out to Laloa empowering Marie, and was able to convince them to remove the powers they bestowed upon her. The end result was Marie and the ship they were on erupted into flames, and the heroes barely escaped with their lives. Whether or not Marie survived this encounter was unclear at the time, but with no sign of her, Jericho set out to inform the relatives of those killed by this evil sorceress. Blade and Hannibal went off for one final showdown against Deacon Frost, who they successfully defeated, but were unable to kill. With New Orleans saved, the vampire hunters left, without another word to Jericho drum.
Not long after Jericho Drum's encounter with Blade, Hannibal King went to Greenwich Village. Visiting a small club emerged called the Voodoo Lounge. Though hardly popular, it became a favored place of gathering for those with actual magical experience. King came here seeking the amulet of Dembala and met with the owner of the club, a woman named Topaz. She brought Hannibal to meet Colette Drum, Jericho's niece, who helped Hannibal find the amulet. Colette has never been seen directly interacting with Jericho, but appears to be in contact with him, or at least was around this time, as she knew Hannibal had just worked with Brother Voodoo and was motivated to help the man. As for Jericho himself, he was focused on a dark disturbance he sensed brewing in the technologically advanced kingdom of Wakanda, where something was causing the barrier between life and death to be weakened. Sporting a new outfit, he traveled to this land and discovered an associate of the panther named Everett Ross, who was hiding out in the home of a villain named Eric Killmonger. Jericho transported himself and Ross to Harlem, where Black Panther was currently being attacked by an ally of Killmonger named Boss Morgan. Panther and his allies, local superheroes Falcon, Goliath, Iron Fist, and Luke Cage, quickly dispatched of Morgan and her gang of villains. Brother Voodoo then transported Ross and Black Panther to T'Challa's temporary headquarters in Brooklyn, where they found the Hulk rampaging. Ross was able to calm the Hulk down, fortunately, as the monstrous being had been manipulated into attacking the area through a transmitter. Now allied with the Panther, Jericho and T'Challa traveled back to Wakanda to investigate the disturbance together. Intuiting that his past foe, Eric Killmonger, was involved and the one that returned from the dead, the King of Wakanda commanded Brother Voodoo to seek out a relic that he is suspected was involved in this, called the Resurrection Altar. As it was in a remote area of the kingdom, T'Challa tasked his loyal advisor Zuri to aid Jericho in this quest. They went to the altar where Jericho began meditating alone for hours, until the panther himself arrived. This altar had been a long part of Wakanda's history, but Black Panther despised the place, as it was built around a strange stone that emitted an unusual radiation. Local residents would use this energy to conduct dark rituals, including ones that could very well raise the dead. However, the purpose of Jericho's quest was largely meant as just a distraction for Zuri, while T'Challa dissolved Wakanda's parliament in an effort to push back against Killmonger's schemes to ruin the country's economy. So when T'Challa did finally show up at the shrine, he was confronted by an enraged Killmonger and his army. Black Panther was forced to battle this gathered force alone at first, and though Jericho claimed he was only there to deal with the rift between life and death, not wanting to get involved himself, he had Daniel's spirit possess Killmonger, who forced the villain to attack his own forces, leading them to retreat. Eric, however, confidently stated they would return in greater numbers. Black Panther realized he would need to settle things between himself and Killmonger through an honorable means in order to hold his rightful place at the throne in the eyes of his people, including Killmonger's men. To that end, he had them go to Warrior Falls, a place where Black Panther and Killmonger once dueled, nearly leading to the death of T'Challa. The two men began a fierce duel while Brother Voodoo sought out an old ally of his, Mark Spector, also known as the Moon Knight. Though Mark had distanced himself from the entity Khonshu, the being that led to him becoming Moon Knight in the first place, he still had a connection with that deity, and Jericho needed that connection to restore the mystical imbalance created by Killmonger's resurrection. Meanwhile, with their duel lasting a total of 13 hours, including some breaks, Jericho returned with Moon Knight just as Killmonger managed to deliver a nearly fatal blow, rendering Black Panther comatose. Realizing the king hadn't yielded, nor was he dead, Everett Ross revealed to Killmonger he had been established as the king of Wakanda in T'Challa's absence. Thus, the interim king immediately declared an end to the challenge and surrendered, making Killmonger the new king of Wakanda. Confirming that Eric's resurrection had destabilized the afterlife, and repeating it went T'Challa the same way would be profoundly dangerous, especially considering the resurrection altar's dark energies. Voodoo instead devised a different plan to restore Black Panther using Moon Knight. Jericho teleported everyone to Tranquility Temple, a holy site in Wakanda. Joined by Dr. Tambak, Wakanda's royal surgeon, they set about to heal T'Challa both physically and spiritually. 
To help Black Panther's spirit, Jericho sent Moon Knight's Ka to the afterlife, where they sought out Khonshu, who would be able to heal T'Challa while also restoring balance to the world and the afterlife. While they did so, in the real world, Everett Ross impatiently waited for results. After eight days of no results, he sought out Brother Voodoo for answers, only to find Jericho Drum near death with his throat slit wide open. Meanwhile, in the realm of spirits, Black Panther and Moon Knight found the souls of past kings of Wakanda, all slain, when they were suddenly attacked by a sinister and powerful being known as Nightmare. The very presence of Nightmare within the spiritual realm plagued Everett Ross with nightmares even in the real world while he was awake approaching Brother Voodoo's apparent corpse. The two were eventually discovered by members of the Dora Magi, Wakanda's special forces. They were able to save Jericho while Black Panther managed to defeat Nightmare, though only because they were in the spirit realm and not in the realm of dreams, where Nightmare is far more powerful. Brother Voodoo barely survived the encounter and only did so by reaching a meditative state that slowed his bodily functions to a crawl. Recovering, he informed T'Challa that a person called Malice was the one who attacked him, a villain apparently created by Killmonger. Though Black Panther would confront Malice shortly after this, Jericho's vocal cords were badly damaged, and he would need advanced microsurgery to restore his ability to speak. It would take time for him to recover, and when he did, he returned to his life in New Orleans. Now an established and powerful practitioner of the mystic arts, the scope and powers of Jericho Drum began to expand. His time in Wakanda proved how his teleportation range had improved considerably, and now he was able to travel across most of the globe in an instant with ease. Meanwhile, Jericho became one of the many beings who could regularly sense some significant mystical events as they occurred across the world, putting him in league with more powerful magic wielders at the time. It was because of his growing power and already existing fame in New Orleans that Jericho Drum caught the attention of Morgan Penrose, one of the most infamous occultists in the city. Penrose invited Brother Voodoo, along with every other major player in the worlds of the occult that lived in New Orleans, to attend an exclusive viewing of the Incio Aquilis, one of the first tarot decks ever created, if not the first ever made. It had four extra cards in its major arcana, deemed too powerful for humanity. Nobody had dared to even view the cards in centuries, let alone read from them, until that night. Just then, the mutant and thief known as Gambit raided Penrose's home in an effort to steal the deck for a job he had recently been hired for upon moving back to the city by Morgan's niece, Lily Penrose. Though Morgan remained confident his security would handle any intruder, they were deftly outmaneuvered by the thief such that when Penrose led Brother Voodoo and the others to the tarot deck, the occultist was shocked to see it gone. Though the theft made Gambit the target of various factions and criminals from across New Orleans, the rest of these events largely escaped the notice of Brother Voodoo. It was only later that Gambit eventually came into contact with a young mutant named Emery Arcano, who was ruthlessly killed by New Orleans police. In revenge, Emery's aunt, a powerful voodoo witch, resurrected Emery, along with all other corpses in the city, to take revenge. This quickly caught the attention of Brother Voodoo, who worked to save as many civilians as he could from the rampaging undead. It was in the streets of New Orleans, amidst the undead horde, that Brother Voodoo met Gambit. They introduced each other, and Gambit demonstrated his powers over kinetic energy by destroying some zombies. This impressed Jericho, who in turn showed off his command of fire, and superhuman strength. At Brother Voodoo's suggestion, Gambit learned he could use his powers, which only work on non-living objects, on the undead, since they weren't alive. This proved remarkably effective against zombies, and the two began to feel like a formidable team when working in tandem. However, Gambit lost his spirit when he recognized one of the dead among the crowd, and though Brother Voodoo tried to encourage the young man, the mutant fully lost faith when they were suddenly attacked by a fully powered, zombified mutant, Emery Arcano. Emery, in life and death, had a mutant power that gave him an impenetrable force field, and in response, Gambit simply fled. Following him, Jericho noted Emery was specifically targeting and chasing after Gambit. The two managed to briefly escape from Emery's clutches and ran into New Orleans police detective Tanaka, 
the woman who shot Emery in the first place, where they learned of Antoinette Arcanot, the aunt who cast the undeath spell, and sought her out in an attempt to put the zombies across the city down for good. Gambit also realized he'd met this woman before in an attempt to save her from the zombie horde earlier, a deed that did not go unnoticed by the witch. They went to Antoinette's home, only to find a horde of undead waiting for the duo. Using his command over nature, Brother Voodoo summoned a swarm of alligators and snakes, who decimated the zombies. Though they were nearly overpowered by Emery, Antoinette stopped her nephew when Gambit saved the old woman from Tanaka, who was trying to shoot the Voodoo Witch. Antoinette relinquished her spell, and Gambit was content to let her live with the guilt of her actions. Tanaka wanted to arrest the elderly woman, but the mutant quickly pointed out the detective had no real evidence of any actual wrongdoing. In response, the corrupt police officer swore revenge against Gambit. Together, the two heroes put the undead to rest, leading them back to their graves. As they did so, Jericho revealed he was starting up a new psychology practice in the city, wanting to go back to his role as a clinical psychologist from before his time as Brother Voodoo. He suggested that Gambit might benefit from some treatment, though it is unclear if the mutant ever took up the offer. And that's it for now, or at least this section of my Brother Voodoo storytelling, but we'll be back at some point to talk about the next major phase in Brother Voodoo's life. And it's not him becoming a clinical psychologist again, but rather a howling commando. See you guys next time on Comic Adam.